According to the positivist tradition, a law or a norm has the status of law if a recognized human authority declares it to be law. Why do we say recognized human authority? Precisely, we are distinguishing it from the spiritual. We're distinguishing it from a deity. Now the content of a law, from a positivist perspective, is irrelevant. From a positivist perspective, what we're concerned with is whether or not the law was enacted by the sovereign. Morality is irrelevant. So the law is valid if the sovereign says it's valid. As simple as that. For a law to be valid within the positivist tradition, a law must have the correct pedigree. What we mean by pedigree is that the sovereign must follow the established procedures for lawmaking. If we were to summarize it, we would say that positivists assess the validity of law by asking two questions. The first question, was the law created by the correct authority? The second question, did the correct authority follow the appropriate procedures? A law is valid only if the answer is yes to both questions. First criticism. Positivism fails to explain how the sovereign decides which law to pass. So if morality is not what is guiding lawmaking, then what is? How did the sovereign decide that it was going to pass this law? Based on what? Now what we need to be clear about is that positivism does not help us distinguish between a good law and a bad law, a right law and a wrong law. All that positivism allows us to do is to distinguish between a valid law and an invalid law. The second criticism, positivism fails to justify the process by which a law is enacted. How can we determine whether the rule that allows Parliament to make law is itself valid? We're stuck. <laughs> we cannot logically determine the validity of the rule that parliamentary decrees are law by asking whether Parliament decreed that its decrees are law. That makes no sense. <laughs> so positivists have provided an answer or a way out of this conundrum. And what they've said, we have Hart, for instance, who says that the rule that governs lawmaking is socially accepted. But what happens if the rule that governs the creation of law is rejected? What if you have protests? civil disobedience, revolutions. All of these situations, what you have people doing is rejecting the law. In that situation, does the raw law remain valid? And according to positivist theorists, it does not. What social rejection does is invalidate the lawmaking procedures and invalidate the laws themselves. And what Kelsen says is that the rules that authorize the sovereign to make law exist in what he refers to or he terms a groomed norm. Now this is a fundamental norm upon which all other norms and thus all other laws will rest. The groomed norm is something you either accept or you do not. If you accept it, then the laws are valid. If you reject it, then the laws are invalid. So both theories are based on notions of social acceptance. That is an important parallel between the two. Hart is saying, that's fine. I may think that what was done was immoral, 
but it's not, it's not relevant when it comes to her trial. What matters here is whether or not the law was validly enacted by the sovereign. Fuller is coming back and saying, no, no, that law is not valid because it's immoral. What is the difference between a tax collector and a gangster? They both want money from you and will punish you if you do not comply. It sounds silly, but this is important for understanding the distinction between natural law and positivism. <laughs>